Hello everybody, welcome to Brainy Dental. In this video, we will be discussing minimal invasive dentistry. Now this forms an important long question in your exams and some parts of it form an important short notes like atraumatic restorative technique, preventive raisin restorations, tunnel preparation. So all this we will be discussing in this video. Let's go ahead and watch. Well, coming to the definition first, we can define MID as a dental science of detecting, diagnosing, intercepting, and treating dental caries on the microscopic level. Principles of MID, there are six principles. The first one is early diagnosis and classification of caries. Now, at this stage, you must realize that for diagnosis of caries at macroscopic level, visual and tactile methods along with videographs are sufficient. But for detecting caries at microscopic level, we need sophisticated tools like electronic caries detector, diagnodent, digital radiography, and so on. The next one is assessment of individual caries risk factors. Now, by observing the influence of various factors on a person, an individual can be categorized into low, moderate, or high risk group. Now, what are these factors? The factors include socioeconomic status of a patient, his sugar intake, the influence of fluoride on the patient and habits like in between meal snacking all these are factors which influence and the patient and we can help us to assess and categorize them and now the next one is the disease control by reduction of cariogenic flora now this means eliminating the cause that means to fight pathogenic microorganism and to reduce the frequency of sugar intake these are the two causes. We know that the main causative microorganism is Streptococcus mutans. Now, if, if we educate the patient into modifying his diet and improving his oral hygiene habits, what will happen is the teeth, they will be less exposed to caries attack. The fourth principle is remineralization of initial lesions with intact surface. Now, this is done with the help of fluorides. We know that fluoride reacts with hydroxyapatite to form fluorapatite, which is more resistant to acid dissolution than natural hydroxyapatite. We can also use bioactive flowers and recalitant. Now, it's abbreviated as CPPACP, its full form being casein phosphopeptide amorphous calcium phosphate. Now, this is a nano complex which is found in the casein protein of the milk. The next principle is. Minimal invasive treatment of cavities. Now this is done to preserve the maximum tooth structure. For that we use materials like GIC and composite. Now we know that these materials they release fluoride and they help in remineralization and they're easy to handle and they bond with the tooth structure. So they all have the all the right things in them. The sixth one is to repair a restoration instead of replacing the defective restorations. So these were the six principles of MID which we have to know. Now to classify minimal invasive lesions, mountain Hume classification system is used. It was proposed in 1997 and this classification is based on the site and the size of the lesion. Now according to this classification, there are only three surfaces on the crown of the tooth which are susceptible to caries. They are site 1 which are the pits and fissures present on the posterior surfaces of the teeth. Site 2 contact areas between any pair of teeth anterior or posterior and site 3 is cervical areas that are present close to the gingival tissue. The different sizes of the lesions are size 0 which is the initial lesion now this can be healed by remineralization. Size 1 it is the smallest minimal lesion that means the cavity has just extended into dentine and it cannot be healed by remineralization. Size 2 is a moderate size cavity. Size 3 is a cavity which needs to be modified and enlarged. That means we need to do proper cavity cutting here. And size 4 is an extensive cavity which may be where there may be loss of cusp or incisal edge of the interior tooth. Now the sites and the sizes they are placed in form of a chart. Now you can see at this end the site all the three sites are placed in form of numbers 1, 2 and 3 and here all the four sizes are placed as 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now I'll explain with help of an example. You look at the first photograph which is this one. Now the site is contact area that means 2. 
and the size it appears to be a moderate size lesion so we will be again size will be 2 that means 2.2 .2. now coming to the next photograph the site is the cervical area which means 3 and the size it again appears to be a moderate size lesion that means size 2 so we can put it 3.2 so I hope you have followed how to use this chart so far under the topic of MID we have covered the definition principles and the classification now the step, next step is the different minimal invasive preparation techniques now we can classify them as mechanical preparation techniques where there are of two types rotary that means using hand pieces and burrs and non-rotary like air abrasion ART or sono abrasion and the next one is chemical mechanical now they are again of two types using chemicals like karyosol or karydex or using enzymes then there is laser therapy and finally there is ozone therapy now we will be doing each one of them in detail coming first to the mechanical technique under that we will discuss the rotary system in which we use the burrs for cutting the tooth and the following systems are used first is fissurotomy system preventive raisin restorations third is tunnel preparation and fourth is the slot preparation fissurotomy it is a process of opening or widening narrow posterior grooves or fissures in a tooth preparation for the placement of sealants or raisin restorations now if you observe the photograph now these are fissurotomy burrs now burrs have have a very small burr head and these burrs they have been designed to minimize heat built up and vibration so how to visualize them these burrs use are used to widen such narrow fissures now if you see it's a very narrow fissure they widen this fissure and make it like this the widened fissure here is then filled up with a pit and fissure sealant making the tooth resistant to carious attack now as this preparation is restricted to enamel only the patient discomfort is minimized and the need of local anesthetic is eliminated therefore these preparations they are very conservative and they are very protective this is some additional information on fish rot me burrs you know in case you are interested you can definitely read this up preventive raisin restorations now these are developed to manage initial caries in deep pits and fissures it is basically an extension of a sealant technique which allows for caries control with minimal loss of tooth structure now if you observe the photograph on your right you will see that this is a fissure which is deep and caries has just started now this is the perfect case for preventive raisin restoration let us see how we do it if you look at the diagram you will observe this is a deep pit which has got caries in it we widen the pit with help of fissurotomy burrs and excavate the caries after that the base of the pit is then filled with composite raisin restoration and it is sealed by a pit and fissure sealant now we have minimally prepared the tooth structure and we have blocked the offending fissure this is preventive raisin restoration tunnel preparation now this is an important short note so please listen carefully now tunnel preparation is done when in a tooth the contact area and the overlying marginal ridge are sound and there is carious lesion present below the contact area then tunnel approach is used to restore the tooth now if you look at the photograph you will observe now this tooth it is an ideal case for tunnel approach here there is a carious lesion present below the contact and the overlying marginal ridge is sound so what we will do is we will prepare a tunnel through the tooth like this to reach the carious lesion and we will preserve the marginal ridge so how we do it let's go ahead and see the first step is that an access channel is cut and it is cut at a point 2 millimeter from the marginal ridge now if you look at the photograph this channel would be cut somewhere here in this position now the next step is we take a metal matrix band and we insert it between the two teeth when we do this to protect the adjacent tooth from any type of cutting then we take a round burr and we start cutting a diagonal channel and if you look at the tooth you can see the channel is cut from somewhere from here till here now this is cut inside the tooth I'm showing it to you outside 
then once the entire diagonal channel is cut what we do is we take a wedge and we place it between the teeth so that to support the matrix band against this tooth since we are going to fill it up then we mix the glass isomer cement and we insert it inside the diagonal channel and we push it inside so that it flows inside now you see this glass isomer it is a restorative material of choice for this because it is flows easily into a small cavity and it has the ability to remineralize any demineralized dentin on the axial wall or enamel on the margins so this is tunnel preparation and this is how we fill the tooth up slot preparation now this type of preparation is indicated when the lesion is very small and it is confined to marginal ridge area such that it does not extend 2.5 mm below the crest of the marginal ridge now if you look at the diagram you will observe this is a small lesion such that the contact area between the two teeth it is intact so we don't need to spoil the contact area we make a small slot in the marginal ridge area and we fill it up this is a minimal tooth preparation technique and the mechanical technique we will now discuss non rotary systems there are four such systems air traumatic restorative technique air abrasion air polishing and sono abrasion air traumatic restorative technique or art you know this is an important short tooth question now art uses the basic technique of caries removal with only hand instruments in combination with modern adhesive restorative materials now this type of technique is especially useful when you are dealing with anxious patients or when you are performing dentistry in some remote areas now this technique it is both preventive as well as restorative now what do we do now if you look at the photograph you will observe that there is pit and fissure caries in this tooth here so what will we do we use only hand instruments in this technique only hand instruments are used and this caries is excavated so we completely excavate this caries and this type of cavity gets formed then we use restorative material which is viscous form of glass isomer cement it is mixed and it is inserted in this cavity and it is filled up the lesion gets sealed so it is as simple as that now i summarized important points of this technique in these four points i would suggest that you read them up and you note them air abrasion it is a technique which utilizes the kinetic energy of high velocity stream of particles to remove the tooth structure so we have high velocity stream of particles coming out and they cut the tooth structure now these particles they cut or abrade rapidly without producing any heat vibration or noise that is why this technique is also referred to as kinetic cavity preparation now this is sometimes asked in the viva now aluminum oxide or alumina particles have been used for this purpose and this is a biocompatible bio method it causes preservation of tooth structure and it produces micro smooth margins these are indications for air abrasion in case you want to prepare for a short note you can write these down you take a screenshot and you can make your notes accordingly air polishing It's a technique which comprises of bombardment of tooth surface with fine water soluble particles under air pressure. Now it is used to remove surface enamel stains, plaque and removal of caries dentine at the end of cavity preparation. Sono abrasion is a technique that utilizes high frequency ultrasonic air scalers with modified abrasive tips. Now if you look at the first photograph, now this scaler tip it has it is shaped like that of a proximal box of a cavity preparation now when this scalar tip is placed in the proximal surface of the cavity it can cut directly according to the shape of a proximal box and it is of different these abrasive tips are of different sizes so if you want we can have a minimally invasive cutting preparation now i have listed the advantages and the disadvantages of this system in case you're interested you can have a look at it and make your notes accordingly i hope you enjoyed your lecture in the next part we will discuss the chemo mechanical cavity preparation laser therapy and ozone therapy do like this lecture subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends thank you